So welcome to the latest in our series of interviews um, in collaboration with Millican, um, talking about the safe return to work and um, people's lockdown experiences and where we go from here generally. Um, I'm very fortunate to have with me today Anne-Marie Aguilar, who is a Senior Vice President with the International World Building Institute, um, which I've been hearing a lot from in the, uh, in the past couple of weeks and months through various communication methods, which is fantastic. And obviously, it's such a pertinent topic right now. I mean, it always was, I mean, for those in the know, but um, I think wellness and um, the um, approach to wellness in the workplace and how will that change as lockdown eases and how will we return to work? So, um, Amory, over to you to perhaps talk us through that and perhaps, you know, give, maybe give some context to um, the purpose of the um, International Wellbuilding Institute for those who aren't so familiar with the institution. Yeah, fabulous. Thank you, Helen, and thank you for inviting me. I'm really proud of the relationship that the IWBI has with Milliken. So it's it's fabulous to be able to kind of have an opportunity to talk about the way we've started looking at the well building standard in relationship to COVID-19 and how we're helping both clients and just interested parties around the world. I mean, We've, we've really started looking at COVID-19 across four really important phases, which are like prevention and preparedness, resilience and recovery. And I think finally now, after 10 weeks in lockdown, I think we're at the resilience and recovery phase. So the question about what is this gonna look like when we come back to work is so pertinent. And, um, so I think we've, we've kind of tried to highlight for our clients and, and anyone who's really concerned about the wellness movement and now that health is at the center of everyone's conversation i think we're trying to focus it across key areas in the built environment and even though we focused on eight for a, a document that we're releasing to the public um, i thought it would be good today to focus on four of the most important key aspects that i think occupants are really going to be thinking about and I, I think the first and foremost is going to be promoting clean contact, like how do we actually keep people in a position where they can maintain good cleaning protocols and ha hand washing habits, which are two key elements in the well building standard that really help reduce the chance of infection by creating a sense of resilience in the organization, not only in the way that the buildings are cleaned and maintained, but in the sort of hand washing habits that can promote individual resilience. Um, the second one that I think everyone is talking about, which is super key to all of these uh, return to work discussions is air quality. How do we keep the air, especially indoor air, as refreshed as possible? So the research that we have found is that you've got to increase the ventilation in the building and that is the only way that we can really help reduce the chance of any sort of influenza type viruses. And I think that's really gonna call on some really important support from like maintenance. Uh, we really need to be looking at facilities maintenance to help with the maintenance of the building, but filtration media, like looking at your ventilation and your air conditioning systems to see how you can make sure that mold and other little particulates are getting properly cleaned out of the system. And that will prevent the sort of respiratory illnesses that could possibly happen. And we're all looking to going back to places that have been inactive for the last eight to 10 weeks. So really important to talk to facilities management about like, what are the things that we need to do to get these buildings up and open and in a position where they can welcome folks back. Um, the third area, which I think has been a really big spotlight for most of us is the sort of movement and comfort like including people who are now working from home. And I think even though we are going to be having a return to work, I think it's only going to be for probably one, maybe one third of the population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you think about it, the whole like immediate decision to keep everybody working from home was one of the world's largest, you know, like work at home experiments. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, I think they, the statistic recently was something like, 44% of their companies globally didn't even think that remote working was an opportunity and didn't allow it. Mm -hmm. So I think even though most companies had to really scramble to try and get their workforce up and running, I think now people are going to start spending a lot of time thinking, how do we really prepare our teams for proper 
working from home. And that means like really creating functional spaces that people can work from and even like ergonomic spaces. And one of the biggest problems is sort of how people are sitting and the position at their desk and are they getting up and moving around. So I think it's, it's really gonna be important as people return to work to not forget about the folks who are still working from home. And the last of the four points that I think is, is so important, and this goes not only for you know, stress related to work, but stress of these sorts of like, you know, immediate COVID-19 responses is how are we helping with mental resilience? You know, what are we doing to really help the average worker be able to be in a position of, of safety in terms of mental health? And the thing that that really highlights for most people is that, you know, stress, really weakens the immune system. And we've known now that like chronic stress can introduce things like depression and cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And those are the very things that have made us vulnerable to virus conditions like COVID-19. So I think as people start moving back into the office and you still have staff that are working from home, I think companies need to really ensure that all staff have access to really proper mental health support and, and then be able to address people who are coming back and say like, how did this crisis affect you? What's the kind of support network we're putting in place for people who've really been alone for eight to 10 weeks, who've had to deal with maintaining, you know, education programs for their kids or working in really tight environments with other family members. What are we doing to support those people as they come back? So those were my four key points that I think are the, the main topics when people start returning to work. 